What's up, investors? It's Mike from MJF Invest. Today's video is going to be about App Harvest. Before I get into that, please hit that like button. Uh, also, subscribe to the channel. It's a young channel. I really want to grow a full positive investors who love this process. Uh, if that's you, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you're notified when I upload new content. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor. You should be doing all your own research. It's ultimately your decision whether you want to buy any of the stocks I talk about on this channel. And let's talk stocks in the comment section. Uh, App Harvest right now is trading under ticker symbol NOVS. Uh, it's a SPAC. Uh, I made a video about this company about, about six weeks ago uh, when it was trading around $11. It's up over $15 now. Uh, but I think this is a pretty good time to, to make another video uh, about this company. Uh, we're pre-merger. The, mer uh, the merger should be going through pretty soon. Uh, but for those who don't know, App Harvest has entered into a definitive business combination agreement with Novus Capital. The transaction will provide $475 million to gross proceeds to the company, including a $375 million fully committed common stock pipe at $10 per share, anchored by existing. Uh, this company has a lot of good stuff going on. Uh, I'm attracted to it for, for a bunch of reasons. One, particularly the market that it's in. Uh, sustainable food is something that should definitely be on everybody's radar. You know, uh, it's a problem that I don't think a lot of people are talking about or even aware of. So these companies like that, these companies like App Harvest, you know, and Aqua Bounty, uh, some others uh, that fill this gap are, are very attractive invest investments, in my opinion. Uh, first and foremost, I wanted to talk about the company's chairman, founder, and CEO named Jonathan Webb. He's a very exciting CEO. He's the kind of CEO I could definitely see when visible and when given the opportunity will attract investors. He's a passionate guy. He, you know, he likes his product. He is a, he's a visionary CEO. Uh, so I think that's a, a good asset, a big asset. Uh, and when the time is right and when he's given the opportunity, I think he's going to get some people excited about this. Uh, also noted, Martha Stewart sits on the board of directors. She also has a platform that could, and a name that could attract retail investors. App Harvest Overview, developer and operator of applied technology, large scale controlled indoor farms, producing U.S. grown fresh produce for national grocers. The agriculture market outlook is a global food production is woefully short of its estimated future needs and innovation is required to meet that future demand. Like we talked about a little bit earlier, uh, there's a gap, there's, you know, the population's growing, the climate is changing. Uh, we're looking to reduce our carbon footprint as much as we can uh, while tapping into some new ways to feed everyone. Um, you know, I think the, the climate or the population rather is expected to grow uh, to 9 billion uh, plus, over strong demand for local, safe, and reliable produce. National grocers are seeking year-round sources of controlled, indoor, domestically grown produce, requiring thousands of acres of newly created U.S. production. They're strategically located in Kentucky, ideally suited for App Harvest's significant growth vision, uh, which is definitely also clever on their part. I really like uh, the reason they chose Kentucky or the Appalachia. Uh, and they're doing some pretty cool and innovative things to to ramp up like production and, and workforce. Um, you know, we'll get into that a little bit later on in the video. Uh, make sure you stick around to the very end. I'm going to cover a lot. Uh, you know, this company is, is has a lot going on and this could be a really good opportunity. The UN has found the world will need at least 50% more food by 2050, yet 70% of all fresh water is already dedicated to agriculture. Unless we change, we will need two planet Earths. Two planet Earths. I mean, that's pretty pretty incredible. Uh, so, so this is definitely a market, an emerging market. Um, you know, a new way rather, not an emerging market. It's a new way to do agriculture, ag tech, uh, blending technology to feed us. So, I think this is a pretty pretty interesting company. You know, it fits right into what the type of stocks that I like to talk about. Uh, it's early on. In the company, it's pre-revenue. Um, they're also noting that COVID-19 exposed the unstable nature of America's food system. As shortages mounted across the country and worldwide, it highlighted our reliance on uncertain imports. And 69% of fresh vine crops sold in the U.S. in 2018 were 
imported. Uh, and that's what I want to touch on as well. Look, 79, I'm sorry, 70% of our um, our produce is coming from Mexico in the, as far as vine crops. Uh, so I think the pandemic really showed to be self-reliant, not only in manufacturing, uh, <laughs> but in food. I mean, you've got to be able to feed your own population in case of a disaster like this pandemic just showed. And right there, they're looking at the. They just started making leafy greens. Uh, they were only they were exclusive to tomatoes when I made my last video. Uh, and that and right now on the screen, they're they're showing you the market for the leafy greens. And shockingly, these are big markets. You know, the fresh leafy greens market is valued at six point seven billion dollars. Um. So you know, the market's there. The demand is there. That they're they're showing you that. Uh, and so I think this is a pretty good transition for them. And they're strat strategically located in, in Appalachia. Uh, this was really significant, I thought. Um, they call it the Appalachian Advantage. Uh, they could reach 70% of the U.S. population within a day's drive. So that results in fresher foods. Uh, that reduces carbon footprint and transport. Uh, both, both really good signs for the company. Uh, in 2018, Kentucky was wettest was one of the wettest years on record. Uh, I, I listened to Jonathan Davis talk in an interview, and he was talking about how California, some of the wildfires uh, in that region, in that whole southwest region, uh, it's drying up. Um, they're, they're really being affected by climate change. So California, Mexico, those areas, that's where we're getting most of our stuff from, our tomatoes and leafy greens. A lot of our produce comes from there. Uh, those areas are drying up. Uh, so here comes App Harvest. You know, they really smart move on two ends. One with it being, you know, they're, they're calling it the wettest. Uh, it's the 12th wettest state in the country. And also the fact that they're within a one day drive of 70% of the US, U.S. population, which is excellent. If they have access to the top grocers with partnerships, access to the top grocers, partnerships with the, not, with the, with the who's who of, uh, of grocers out there. Uh, right now, these relationships are regional. Um, I think they're pretty much exclusive to the Kentucky, West Virginia area. But as this company gets bigger and as more of these farms uh, grow and uh, they start laying them out, I would expect these relationships to grow into nationwide. Uh, so being sold in you know, all Walmarts and all Publix and all Costco's and all Kroger's and all Target's and Whole Foods and Trader Joe's and Wegmans. Uh, so that's when you're really talking about them capitalizing on some of the, you know, the big mark, bigger markets. Uh, as of now, it's pre-revenue uh, pretty much and, and it's early on. Uh, that's, but that's why the company's trading at $15 a share. Uh, I think the future is pretty bright. Uh, I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, we're taking a look at some of their... Uh, partnerships, uh, how they're how they're doing their business. I thought something was particularly fascinating too. Uh, they're they struck deals with some universities to give partner uh, programs and uh, degrees, certif certifications and degrees in this field. Uh, so they're gonna kind of make their own workforce, uh, which is really cool, kind of kind of innovative as well. And they also struck a, a deal with the Dutch government and Kentucky government. So the local government's on board. Uh, Holland is the number two ag exporter in the world, uh, according to this year. And, you know, the, you know, pretty exciting stuff for this company. It's early on. If I'm missing anything, drop it in the comments. Let's talk stocks. If you're still watching, thank you so much. Hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts about this company. Thank you so much for watching.